okay? So we'll go back to another video. Here's a little nice geometry problem and we're given two different types of circles. We have one circle that are both with radius one plus the square root of two and another circle with a radius of one. And these three circles all together are mutually tangent to each other to form this little shaded area here. But don't worry, we don't actually need to solve for the area. Instead, we'd like to know what the perimeter of this shaded area is. So if we're solving for perimeters, especially with these circles mutually tangent to each other, so we can see that we're going to actually have to utilize the arc, arc length formula. But what comes to the question is, how do we actually know what the angle and measure, so theta, radians, we need to solve for? So typically with geometry problems like this, we'd like to add a little more detail, add more to the construction. So that's actually just pretty simple from here on out, to be honest. So with that, let's actually just jump right in. Let me call each of these midpoints the center of our circles. I'll label these as the vertices A, B, and C. So what I'll do now is let's actually extend those line segments out. So this is actually going to form a length here. Then the length is going to form right here. And another length connecting over here as well. Okay, so you'll see that we actually have some form of a triangle constructed from here. So let me also label these angles over here. So. And what's nice is that it's because we have radius of 1 plus the square root of 2 and over here. So if you add the lengths together, so we actually have what seems to be an isosceles triangle with a different base length over here and then two of the same lengths from these sides over here. Line segments AC and BC. So let's actually put this down as X. So X is going to equal our line segment AB. And so if I just add up these two lengths together, so that means that's going to give us 2 plus 2 times the square root of 2. I'll call this line segment over here, and these are the same lengths. We'll call this y. y is equal to line segment AC and also BC, which is equal to if I add the lengths together. So that means I have this as 2 plus the square root of 2. And just for this, let's actually label these points where the circles are tint or touching each other. So over here, I'll call this call this point D. I'll call this point over here E. And then this point over here, we'll call this F. And so with our angles, I saw these triangles. So as mentioned, I forgot to put this down to label the angles. So we have that we have alpha here. And so this is also going to be alpha as well. And I'll just call this angle over here, we'll call this lowercase beta. So now we just have to find what our angles are to the point that eventually, once we solve for those angles, we can actually calculate the arc length for each of these circles and then add, the per add, us add it up together to get our little perimeter of the center of that shaded area right here. So how do we actually do something like this? So to find our angle, we're actually going to be using our law of cosine rule. So we'll put this as now. We're going to solve this for alpha. If you solve this for beta, sure, you can solve it, but it's actually a little bit more tedious, a little difficult. But solving for alpha is going to be the easier approach from here. So I have y squared, and we'll set this equal to the rule. So x squared plus y squared, and subtract with 2 times x times y, and then multiply with cosine of alpha, whatever is directly across from here. Now with this, so we can actually just solve everything out. So subtract y squared, and I'll just add this quantity to the other side. So that'll lead us with x squared and well divide the x as well so now that just leaves us with a single quantity of x then set this equal to 2 times y times cosine of alpha now we have that our x length is 2 plus 2 times square root 2 our y is 2 plus the square root 2 so we can actually just substitute some stuff in so x is going to be 2 plus 2 times the square root of 2 then equals 2 times 2 plus the square root of 2 and then multiply with cosine of alpha Okay, so with this, so now we can actually just divide this quantity to both sides. So that'll just leave us with a single cosine quantity on its own. Okay, so that'll leave us with two plus two plus two times square root of two divided by this. I can factor out the two, so that two will cancel. And so that'll leave us with a numerator of one plus the square root of two, then divided by two plus the square root of two. So if I just solve this out, so let's actually multiply the conjugate to both the numerator and denominator, specifically two minus the square root of two. Then if I just solve all this out and simplify, we're gonna get that this is the square root of two divided by two. And if I just take the inverse cosine of both sides, so that means alpha is going to equal our radian of pi divided by four. So in other words, 45 degrees in other words. So 45 here, 45 here. And then our beta is actually going to equal 90 degrees Degrees, aka pi divided by 2. I know it doesn't look like that to draw on the scale because we have a 90 degree angle, a right angle, but from this construction, it doesn't look like it. But hey, 
none of my sketches are drawn to scale to begin with in the first place. Okay, so we have our two values here. So we're pretty much just at um, the last step of just finding our arc length. So now to find our perimeter, we're actually going to calculate the arc length. So from D to F, the arc length from F to E, and then our arc length of D to E, add everything together. And so we'll get that our perimeter is this following over here. And D, E, and D, F are the same because yet again, this is with the same radius. So that's nice. And it's also with the same angle as well. So I'm going to put this as arc D, F, which is also equivalent to arc D, E. So this is going to equal two. So our formula for finding the arc length is basically just your radius and then multiply with your angle measure. So that means our radius is going to equal one plus the square root of two quantity, then multiply with pi divided by four. So I'll just leave that the way it is. And so now we just calculate our arc length of EF. So our radius is one and then our angle measure for beta that's pi over two, which is just equal to just pi over two. So basically now we just have to calculate the perimeter, which is twice this amount and then add it with this amount. And so now the perimeter, so I'm gonna go over here since that's what we wanna solve for over here. So this is gonna be now two times pi divided by four multiplied by one plus the square root of two. Then add this with pi divided by two. And then now we just have that this is just pi divided by two, then multiply by one plus the square root of two and then add this with one simply just, I just factor out the pi over two quantity. And if we simplify things out even further, we'll get that this is just equal to pi times one plus the square root of two divided by two, which is indeed our perimeter of the shady area of the center, just like that. And so there we have it. So yeah, that's, um, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.